Augur, Bolas, couple of Snapcaster Mage, uh, four Supreme Verdict, and uh, you know, a lot of tools, a lot of anti-aggro tools, a couple of Planeswalkers. Uh, so we'll see how this goes. I think, uh, you know, traditionally this might favor the more aggro control deck, so more of, uh, more of what David's doing, but I don't know. We'll see. The, uh, One of the reasons that traditionally the more aggro control style decks, and what that usually means is relationally to its opponent, it puts down a threat and can protect it so that that threat will go the distance. One of the things that makes that work is counter magic. And uh, David Blankenship only has two is it charm for potential counters or fake counters like Boros Charm making all of your creatures indestructible, for example, might be a fake counter spell. So I'm kind of curious to see how this one's going to play out. Yeah. Blankenship has a lot of uh, direct damage to three Searing Spears and four Boros Charms. So the the Planeswalkers that Jack does have definitely won't be uh, won't be safe. And they're off. Jack has a Hollow Fountain and David a uh, Sacred Foundry. And Jack plays an Isolated Chapel and an Augur and gets an Ultimate Price. And Ultimate Price can hit every non-Boros Reckoner in David Blankenship's deck. And it looks like he has a hand of Azurius Charm, Ultimate Price, and some other cards. Sulphur Falls and an Augur on the other side of the table picks up an it Charm. So last round we saw a lot of Augurs miss. Uh, this, this round they've both hit so far. Jack draws. You've been seeing a lot of this this weekend, which is uh, the Miracle check. And so far, there have not been any Miracles until now. Jack does have two Terminuses. I've been watching other players doing the Miracle check, just I guess for uh, habit yeah. and uh, force of, you know, just so you don't accidentally give something away like, you know, hey, no bonfires of the damned in here. Yeah, I think it's something you get used to, and then, you know, that just becomes how you draw your cards. Uh, Pillar after combat, the blocked auger dies, taking a total of three. One from the other auger, and then two from the pillar. David takes two from putting his land into play on tap, steam vents, and we see a second auger. Does it work? It does. Looks like that might be a supreme verdict that that second auger picked up, third auger of the game. And Azorius Charm to draw a card. And Jack here with a few lands, well it looks like a Dissipate, uh, the ultimate price that we saw earlier. I'm just going to play a land and pass. Yeah, that Augur did pick up a Supreme Verdict for David. And thinking about what he's going to do, attacks for two with the Augurs. And plays a tapped Hollowed Fountain. Thinking about his options, passes the turn. Uh, then it turn, Jack's gonna play a Snapcaster Mage, flashing back that Azurius Charm to draw another card. Uh, and then another one for his turn, picks up a couple more lands. In for two, we can both race. Yep. And he has at least the Drown Yard, uh, which could start uh, going to work on David. And we'll see what David has here. Uh, he may leave an auger back, and yep. he does. And just passes the turn without playing a land. See the drown happen, first of many. So, uh, oh, he's using the drown yard on himself. So probably 
uh, either you know has a Snapcaster Mage, uh, thinks he might draw one, uh, and just doesn't think the Drown Yard is going to get all the way there against David quite yet. So happy to give himself some extra tools. I'm pleased to see Jack do that. He has to realize that this is a Snapcaster uh, deck that his opponent's playing, and currently David Blankenship has no cards in his graveyard. So since Jack not only has um, his own Snapcasters in his deck, but also has several flashback cards, I, I really like that. It's like a small pot potential for value. Yep, and here we're going to see Restoration Angel possibly, yep, get dissipated. And that was at the end of Jack's turn. So David's going to untap and draw. Uh, sends in with both augers, uh, dropping Jack to 15. Yeah, another pair of cards to consider that Jack might be thinking about are Moreland Haunt and Rune Chanter's Pike, both of which could be very dangerous if Drown Yard happens. David does not have either of those cards, but Jack does not have David's deck list. Very true. Uh, David does have a couple copies of Ghost Quarter, which uh, could could be relevant if the Drown Yard starts targeting him. Uh, Jack's just going to attack for two. <clears throat> David with a Supreme Verdict, what looks like another Dissipate, and a Watery, watery grave, grave that he's thinking about playing. And he plays it without paying the life. Boros on your face. And Jack's down to 11, so, you know, the damage from the Augurs adding up here. Um, David has Searing Spear, Boros Charm, and Snapcaster Mage. So the ability to do a lot of damage, uh, you know, pretty easily. Uh, tapped Hollowed Fountain here, and David looks like he's thinking about getting in for another couple of damage. Jack to nine. And uh, it's interesting, Jack has had this ultimate price for quite a while and uh, hasn't used it, you know, probably probably wisely, but these augers have dealt quite a bit of damage, so it'll be interesting to see if that ends up, uh, if that ends up making a big difference. Jack draws and Miracle's a Terminus. So getting rid of those augers and his Snapcaster Mage if it resolves, and it does. So we see Jack with ultimate price, supreme verdict, and looks like another terminus in hand. And David with five lands, casting uh, Snapcaster Mage. This could be um, six damage total, two from the Snapcaster attacking and four from the Boros Charm. Yeah, he may not want to dissipate this, but uh, well, we'll see. I mean, it would pre it would prevent, uh, yeah, six Boom. damage. So he does choose to dissipate. It doesn't feel exciting to get rid of that Snapcaster, but David is representing a lot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so Jack down to five now uh, against the deck with pretty good burn spells, a decent amount of reach. Uh, looks like Jack has, or sorry, uh, David has uh, quite a few cards in hand, so we'll see what he can come up with. And Augur and Bolas, probably and then, looking for some more burn spells. And you said that there is a Searing Spear currently in David's hand? Uh, not that we know of in his hand, but he does have three have in, in his, his deck. deck. Gotcha. So. And did that Augur miss? Turn. And we see a flashback, think twice, from Jack Fogel's graveyard. I think he drew a Jace Memory Adept there. That would be a not bad draw. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I see Jace Memory Adept, Terminus, Ultimate Price, Supreme Verdict. 
and a land, I think. So we'll see how he chooses to play this one. The Jace could make quick work of David uh, with milling ten a turn, or it could draw cards and uh, you know, hopefully find Jack. I Sphinx's Revelation or something like that to gain life and get out of range of these burn spells. Uh, Jack is playing for Sphinx's Revelation, and there appears to be at least one in his graveyard. So Now, if you run a card like Jace Memory Adept, you're basically um, kind of a beat-down version of uh, your options. You could be playing Tamio, you could be playing uh, Jace Architect of Will, there's lots of cards you could be playing. This choice says you're ready to try to kill them with that mill 10. Now, obviously there are other modes, but that's that's a much more let's finish the game kind of choice than the other ones. Yeah, and so we're gonna see an is it charm here. Uh, and Jack is gonna pay for it, which leaves him open to, you know, he's only at five, potentially one from that auger and if David does have another Boros charm. Or a Snapcaster. or Yeah, or a Snapcaster, yeah. Uh, I mean, this says to me that if I were him, uh, I would be ultimate pricing that Augur. Yeah, definitely. The difference between four and five being really huge with those Boros charms in the mm -hmm. graveyard. And he does choose to ultimate price. And we'll see what happens. Snapcaster here could also be used to counter the ultimate price, although it would probably go for one of those Boros charms. And we're going to see the Restoration Angel. That works. Yep. And the Augur picks up a Searing Spear. Oh. Now, Jack does have a, uh, a sweep ability in his hand, so I expect that that Terminus or some other spell is going to be used on this next turn. Supreme Verdict or Terminus. I'm not sure if he has the Verdict, but I know he has the Terminus. Yeah, I believe he has both and uh, a land or two as well. And it's draw a card, mill somebody for one. So he, mill oh, he did draw Sphinx's uh, Revelation. Nice. This is an interesting choice. The life gaining cards are good. The gate is down, so to speak. David Blankenship tapped down for anything that could stop the Sphinx's Revelation. But he does have four damage in play. Yeah, so it's a trade between four damage, uh, taking four damage or, or uh, and gaining four more life, or using that Supreme Verdict, uh, gaining four less life, effectively netting even but if he spends those four mana on the Sphinx's Revelation, he'll draw four more cards. At the same time, leaving David with those creatures is potentially dangerous. So I think we're going to see a Sphinx's Revelation here. Looks like for... Oh, no, a Terminus. And a land and a pass. So I guess Jack feels safe against potentially being burned out here. Does he have a dissipate in hand, did we say? I, uh, not that I saw. I think he, he has... He's representing dissipate, but uh, I don't think he has it. Looks like Sphinx's Revelation, Land, and Supreme Verdict. The Snapcaster... Okay, he's like, what does the ultimate do? The ultimate is any number of players draws 20 cards. Not bad. Sorry, target player out there, Sticklers. So any number of target players. So if you've got your Witchbane Orb out, you're safe. Yep. Well, you're safe from drawing 20 cards, assuming you don't want to. And that has got to feel really good for Jack. David says go. Yeah, untapping with a ton of mana and a Sphinx's Revelation in hand. Draws another land. Let's draw another card, just in case. And... Mills himself, gets rid of an auger. Mills an auger, draws, I think that's a Drown Yard. So, I imagine we'll see those Drown Yards activated soon after that revelation resolves. Uh, 
another land from David, or not another land from David, but a Searing Spear, the end of Jack's turn. Uh, Jack could potentially be worried about counter magic from David, although we know that he only has uh, one more Is It Charm, uh, as far as that goes. And so Jack, thinking about the play here, chooses to thinks his revelation for five, it looks like. Four lots. Yeah. <laughs> if David can't stop it, it's practically a million. Yeah. So, gaining five and then taking three, assuming the spear resolves, he'll go to seven. And David here trying to represent like he has a counterspell. Yeah. With those three mana sort of making it look like he dissipate, which we know he doesn't have in his deck. And he's like, spend two more? Yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. <laughs> All right, so. This will put him down to seven life after everything resolves. Gain five, minus three, up to seven. And David, doing that as a charm, reluctantly just trying to tap Jack down so he can do something useful here. But what can he do that is going to be useful of his own. He could do his own Sphinx's Revelation for three, perhaps, if he draws a land that comes into play untapped. Yep. Uh, that's an option. I think that's a rough uh, rough option for him with the Jason play, but it's one avenue. It could draw him a couple of burn spells. He's actually, you know, with, with two pillar, three spear, and four charm, uh, he's used one, one, and and two of those, so he's running a little low on burn spells. Uh, he says go, does already. not lay that land and says go. And Jack, probably in good shape here. Yeah, I would uh, I would think so. Jace is up to the point where it can ultimate, although I don't think we'll see that. Uh, probably content to either plus one or mill ten, and this looks like a mill ten here. And we... Uh, get to show Jack Fogel that Sphinx's revelation for the first time. Now, why is that important? This communicates to Jack that David's deck is a little less aggressive than other de decks. So there's lots of good information there for Jack. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely important. Like, uh, last round we saw two very different iterations of Blue, White, Red Flash, so uh, it could really inform Jack's uh, sideboarding choices, and here he's counting David's deck, uh, figuring out how many Jace activations are needed or if the ultimate can just uh, potentially end the game right here or in a turn or two. He also has two Drown Yards at least. Drowns them. I think it might be done. Untap. Land. Go. One, two, ten. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now at this point, um, he will have seen a huge portion of David's deck and no counter spells. Yeah, and he's seen three Sphinx's revelations. So lots of information there. Uh, you know, he's seen the Reckoners, so he knows that it's Reckoner, not Geist, at least in the main deck. Um, Although David does have Geist of uh, St. Traft in his sideboard, which I imagine we'll see coming in. Uh, David's looking to Boros Charm. I, I believe Jack does have a Sphinx's Revelation. Yeah, he does. Uh, he's probably going to fire off here. Now, a lot of the cards that Jack is going to pick up from this Sphinx's Revelation are going to be cards he's going to have to discard. But that life gain from the Sphinx's Revelation, I mean, he basically is at the point where he's like, well, how much of it? <laughs> yeah, just deciding how much life to gain here, really. He appears to be content with six. So, gaining six, potentially taking four, going to nine... And 
does the force still work? And he's like, yep. <laughs> now, it's, is it going to be to Jack's face? Or is it going to be to the Jace? Uh, looks like it was to the face. 13 minus 4 is 9. Yep. So, Jack with a ton of cards here. Soren, a bunch of lands, Think Twice, Restoration Angel, really a ton of, uh, ton of options. Uh, we see a tragic slip there also. And just trying to decide the last card to discard. And I think we're gonna see Oh, uh, Tragic Slip get cast before that happens. One less card to discard. And now deciding what to keep. Away they go, passes the turn. Sulfur Falls, six mana. David not completely out of it yet, although... And yep, he's like, I can't kill you, and I believe Jace gets me now. A long game one there. Jack Fogel with Esper Control taking it. His opponent, uh, Blue, White, Red, Flash, had him very close to death a few times. And what is the card that lets you just slip away? Sphinx's Revelation. A card we're going to be seeing a lot of, I think, over the next um, couple of years. Yeah, definitely a really strong card. Um, kind of combining combining a, an effect that we've seen before, so paying X to draw X cards with uh, the life gain really lets you, really buys you the time to use those cards that you draw. It's a pretty nice combination of, of effects uh, for a reasonable amount of mana. The uh, first time we had a card that was similar to this was quite a while ago in the form of Stroke of Genius. And um, before that, people really compared it to Brain Geyser, but Brain Geyser is a sorcery. Blue, blue, X, draw X cards. It's very different than that instant ability. And that first stroke way back in the day would get you to the next stroke, would get you to the next stroke. Now, Sphinx's Revelation, that life gain, at first, people were a little bit lukewarm to Sphinx's Revelation. I think until somebody cast it in a deck that was good. Yeah. And then once the first time they saw it happen, it just became clear how devastating Sphinx's Revelation was. Yeah, and you get that same sort of loop. You know, you see you see someone cast it for three or four, and then uh, and then a few turns later, cast it for five, six, or seven, and you know pretty quickly just take the game over. Between that and other cards like Thrag Tusk, uh, and you know, that helps you draw Thrag Tusks. So, yeah, it just ends up being a very good option for staying alive and uh, getting a ton of gas to close out the game with. David Blankenship's sideboard, we're gonna see him probably bring in Jaces of his own, um, and certainly Geist of St. Traft. Geist of St. Traft lets him get closer to that aggro control role we were talking about before. I would be uh, not surprised to see Is it Charm come in as well. And then Negate, definitely. Now the reason I like that Jace is it gives him two angles. He can fight the long game, um, or he can use it to kill their Jace. Yeah, and I've, uh, I've heard of people, uh, in, speaking of boarding, uh, when they bring in Geist in this type of blue-white-red flash deck, uh, swapping out Boros Reckoner for it. Uh, especially in against the deck like uh, like Jack's, Jack if he kills the Boros Reckoner isn't really going to be dealing it damage. He's going to have those sweepers that we've talked about earlier. You know, Terminus, Supreme Verdict. He also has Copy of Devour Flesh, and uh, and Tragic Slip. So uh, not a, nearly as effective. It's an easy swap, really, because a three three for three is efficient but that other ability will almost never come into play. Um, that four of swap for the Geist still leaves him room for between, depending on how he wants to do it, four to six other cards. 
And uh, if he just goes with negate and jace, it's easy to imagine cutting supreme verdict for negates and then having your two cards left, pillar of flame for jace, and you still have a lot of great cards in there. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, uh, he has a detention sphere that he might bring in, uh, depending on how many permanents he thinks, depending on how many really scary permanents he thinks Jack has. Uh, he just saw a Jace that game, as far as the, as far as that goes. But he may bring it in. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how many cards he has to take out and how many spots he needs to fill. Uh, on Jack's side, he's got. Um, he has a couple of Devour Flesh, which I imagine will come in to help fight Geist. He's got an Obsidat Ghost Council. Uh, which could be used just to, just as a really large threat that David doesn't have a good way of taking care of, uh, gaining life to get him back in the game. Um, we see one Dispel, uh, which may come in against the quite a few instants that David had, although that's not really what Jack wants to be doing, I think. Uh, although using it to counter Boris Charms is definitely nice. But uh, overall, I think Jack has definitely less sideboard uh, health than David, who's really, uh, in a way, transforming in a bit, taking out these Boris Reckoners, putting in Geist, and... He's actually becoming that aggro control... Um, he's taking on that role you brought up earlier, where you were talking about how David's deck might have a matchup advantage because of the ability to be the aggro control versus control matchup. Game one, he doesn't have as much of that, but game two, he can become that very thing. He has all the tools necessary to get into one of the most lopsided archetype matchups that exists in Magic. And in fact, perhaps the only lopsided archetype matchup um, that actually truly exists in Magic. Yeah, between those counter spells and, uh, and Jace giving him another, another avenue to win. Uh, looks like both players have their starting hands. And... They'll both keep. Uh, David starts with a hollowed fountain. Jack draws a dissipate, plays a land and passes. And David will just play a sulfur falls and pass. We may see some draw go played here, although uh, this, this would be a good opportunity for David to land a Geist if he has one. and. Doesn't seem that he does. Jack's going to cycle an Azurius Charm. Draws yeah. what looks like a Supreme Verdict. Yeah, if we pretend, and he passes the turn, if we pretend that David has a highly advantaged game two and three, he still needs to get above 70% in those to, uh, to win this match, just on math. Hmm. I don't know what that card he... Uh, he is casting um, Forbidden Alchemy, his one of in the deck. Oh, okay. It's an alternate art Forbidden Alchemy that's foil. And we see Devour of, Devour Flesh, what looks like a Sphinx's Revelation, go to the graveyard. And I think he just picked up a land off of that. Uh, and a Hollowed Fountain also. Passes the turn. Both players with a handful of cards, just playing draw go for a bit. You can see uh, uh, Sphinx's Revelation drawn by Jack, and it doesn't look like he has a land. And it'll Pass the turn. Now the longer game does favor Jack, but he is missing land drops, and this is going to mean that David Blankenship can actually get to that position where he can play basically the entire, he could be the driver of this entire ship. If Jack does not draw some land soon, David can probably do whatever he wants without fear of retribution from Jack. Yeah, and uh, we see Jack with most of his spells costing three or more, except he does have a couple Devour Flesh. It's going to really limit how many spells Jack can cast in a turn cycle, and David's quickly getting to the point where he can cast multiple spells and uh, really start to get ahead and take advantage of the fact that 
Jack is uh, missing these land drops. And uh, David lays his seventh land. Jack indeed did discard last turn. And we see a Sphinx's revelation for one, otherwise known as, please help me. <laughs> Oh, wow, and it is a it's charm. It is a charm. David's like, nah, uh, that's okay. Hey, um, don't need it anyway. Fifth land, and another Sphinx's Revelation in Jack's hand, which makes the Sphinx's Revelation for one play make a lot more sense. He knows he has an extra one once he as, once he gets lands, as long as he can get to that point. Uh, we see a Ghost Quarter from David. And Jack, Jack draws another land. And so, puts right it into play in wisely. It. Doesn't try to pretend like he drew something else. <laughs> this game still favoring David right now, despite him uh, not beating down. He doesn't need to beat down to win if he can just overwhelm Jack. With all of that mana, he's got Sphinx's Revelations of his own in his deck. And Jack has two Sphinx's Revelations, but can only fire them off for three right now, which looks like he will try. I would not be surprised by Snapcaster, is it Charm here? Yeah, or he, uh, David really has plenty of things that he could have to combat this, so negate, yeah, we see a negate. Works. It looks like he just, Jack just drew a think twice, I believe. Um, and he passes. Just see a pass. And David passes back. And it is a Think Twice. Think Twice, not a card I'm uh, a big fan of right now in Standard, but in this kind of moment where you're grinding out and you're just trying to get a card here or there, it's awesome. Yep. And he does not flash it back right now because he does not want to have to discard if he doesn't draw the land. And he does get the land. And looks like we're going to see that Ghost Quarter target Probably the Drown Yard, or... Are we gonna get a last Drown in there first? <laughs> first, last Drown. And... Nope, he's just like, I'll just take the land. And gets an island. Uh, David with plenty of mana happy to use that ghost quarter to prevent the potential milling uh, as it looks like this game is gonna go uh, could go long uh, even just a few activations of drown yard could make the difference David does need to be a little cautious here if you look at that clock ticking down 18 minutes remain yeah he is down a game And by cautious, I mean he might need to think about speeding up. Right. Cautious to be not quite as cautious. And, uh, he definitely has the ability to close games out quickly, but we'll see if he can do that against uh, really a handful of answers from Jack, uh, a few of which are uncounterable. So we might see a Devour Flesh here. Looks like Jack's thinking about that. During the upkeep, upkeep, he casts Devour Flesh. And he does this play because he wants to have David choose to use that mana on his own turn rather than on Jack's turn. Right. If uh, David were to counter that spell at the end of Jack's turn, those lands would immediately untap and he'd have those resources back. By casting it on David's upkeep, he is making, uh, making him commit to using those lands for the whole turn cycle if he chooses to like David figuring out what colors of mana he has available. Getting ready to cast Cruel Ultimatum. <laughs> but probably not. Well, hopefully not for David. And Pass the turn again. The turn. So you see that thing twice flashback. What looked like a supreme verdict. Drawn. That's what I saw as well. And then another drown yard. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, what looked pretty good for David uh, getting ahead on land is uh, turning around a bit now that both players have land, but Jack has a drown yard. 
I'm kind of wondering, I, having been unable to see David's hand this whole time, how long he's had these angels. And uh, Jack says, sure. And then during the upkeep, devour flesh. Yeah, so the same play we saw last turn. Uh, same reasoning behind it. David gains some life, which is probably going to be irrelevant with that drown yard. David trying to figure out if there's anything he can do on this turn. Oh, the huh. Reckoner. Goes with a Boros Reckoner that he chose to leave in. And our, yeah, we're gonna see a mill for three. So Jack is fine with that Reckoner. Has plenty of answers in his hand. So now we see several cards that uh, I think are not as well suited to this matchup. David Blankenship, I think, might be feeling like this is a matchup where he can get into damage and then burn out Jack, but I think we're clearly at the point where uh, that path is no longer open. He's going to have to get in repeated damage. Yeah, and those angels would have been pretty important for uh, getting him for three at a time, but both of them were taken care of right away. And uh, Jack's fine to just take a bit of damage here. He uh, looks to be pretty comfortable, has a, what I think is a dissipate in hand, and uh, at least one supreme verdict. And so we're gonna see another drown for three. And that we may be seeing that forbidden, no. Only six lands, but he does have a Forbidden Alchemy in his graveyard that I, I imagine we'll see flashback fairly soon. He draws one of his three Snapcaster Mage. Uh, Glacial Fortress gets added to the table. So 10 lands, 11 lands for Jack. Supreme Verdict takes care of that. Bethany Hilton, stage, please. David counting Jack's land. Okay. Curious about how much potential life gain a Sphinx's revelation would be. I think he's looking at doing his own. Right, yep. Players, we see Jack does have a Sphinx's revelation. For four. David fires one off for four. And Just spell in hand, I believe. Oh, yeah. Take that. David with either three or four lands just lets that dispel resolve. For those of you who are just joining us, I'm Adrian Sullivan here with Ben Hayes. We're watching the fifth round of Swiss here for the Star City Games Open Series in Cincinnati. And David tapping three, four, five. Attempts at Jace, which I think we'll see Jack dissipate here. And David does not look happy about that, based on his hand motions. And just passes the turn. And, uh, Jack still has that Sphinx's revelation that, and appears to have drawn a Jace of his own, which is going to speed that milling plan up a lot. Ouch. Draw He's a draw card. one, mill you one. Yep, and mill David. We see a Restoration Angel drawn. Searing Spear that takes... Two Searing Spears might take that Jace out. I think Jack yeah. is... Uh, I don't believe Jack has a counter spell, but representing one there. Oh, he has a Snapcaster, so he does have access to a counter spell. I mean, he's got so much use out of that at this point. Yeah. And he can still just drown David out. And finally, we see the Geist of St. Traft. But if he has Geist of St. Traft and Boros Reckoner and Pillar of Flame and Searing Spear all in his deck, what did he take out? Yeah, he may have. Azorius Charm, uh, that's a, a definite reasonable card because that basically says blue-white 
a draw card. We have not seen an auger. I don't know. Jack, theoretically on a three-turn clock from that Geist of St. Traft, but there are plenty of things he can do to change that. Yeah, and Angel, I believe he still has a Supreme Verdict. Uh, that Geist is about 15 turns later than David would have liked it to come down. But may still do good work. We'll see what happens. Uh, that Sphinx's revelation in hand has got to feel so comforting for Jack right now. Yeah. Just knowing, oh, you know, whatever, I can take this back over. Go. I don't care. At any point, he could gain, you know... Upkeep. Oh, upkeep. Let's gain five. Um, yeah. And drawing five. He also has that Snapcaster Mage in hand, so he can Sphinx's Revelation again if he wants to. Draws another Jace and the gold card and some other stuff. And uh, that five makes it a four-turn clock for the Geist. David swings in for six. Yep. Angel goes away. David passes the turn. Jack now. Ton of cards in hand. Draws another Drown Yard, which will speed that up. We will probably see Supreme Verdict here. Uh, we'll probably not see that Drown Yard tap for Supreme Verdict, though. And yep, Supreme Verdict comes down to take out Geist. Uh, Jack is at the point where he can Drown Yard twice. Uh, per turn, which will be a pretty fast clock against David's library. Uh, not even counting the, the Jace that Jack has. Geist, or sorry, Jace, not Geist. Both of them are beatdown cards. <laughs> Different types of beatdown, but... Uh, Draw one, mill one. And draws another Snapcaster Mage, it looked like. So, Jack with... Uh, all the answers here. Yep. And discards a land. And Jack opting to be controlling with his Jace rather than going for the throat. Yeah. Knows that he, you know, has those drown yards. Isn't really at risk here with uh, the Snapcaster Mage for the Sphinx's Revelation. Just Matt wants to make sure he keeps it locked up. And Look at that hand. He had, like, Negate in there as well. Yeah. Uh, negate, Snapcaster, and Friends. Snapcaster, I believe Dissipate. another Snapcaster. Oh no, that's another Jace. Uh, another Jace and a Restoration Angel. So he can really cast his entire graveyard between those Snapcasters and Restoration Angels. Uh, and his graveyard's full of some pretty nice stuff. So Now he's going beat down. Right. Take that, library. I think we're going to see yeah, 10 here and then a whole bunch more from the Drown Yards. And you're right, I have not seen any Augers. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think David may have taken those augers out, along with probably the Supreme Verdicts uh, for Geists, Negates, and Jaces. Uh, yeah, I think it was Supreme Verdict, Azorius Charm, Augur of Bolas for 10 cards. Yep. And uh, leaving those Reckoners in, I guess, uh, he would rather have them than any of the other cards he took out, which, you know, makes makes enough sense. Gives him a beatdown option that might not be great, but it's, uh, it's still there. And we do see Obzidat? Obzidayat? Obzidayat. I, I'm not sure how you actually say their name. Obzidat. Probably. Uh, coming down and draining for two, so now Jack's might be winning the damage race and the library race. You see a Snapcaster Mage come down, doing really whatever it wants to do. Uh, Devour Flesh to take out that Geist. Negate from David, which Jack is fine with. Jack, Not many cards left. Jack in the comfortable position to be able to have two different ways to kill David. Uh, okay. So that's game. It looks like Jack uh, takes the match 2-0 with uh, Esper Control.
over blue, white, red flash. If you're just joining us, you're catching the end of a long match between Jack Foy.